Hello everyone, welcome to the SMNP Reviews YouTube channel. My name is Caroline and I'm a family nurse practitioner and one of the NP instructors here at SMNP Reviews. In today's video, we'll tackle an HEENT practice question similar to what you might encounter on the AANP or ANCC board exams. Now, if you wanna work through even more practice questions, I highly recommend checking out our primary care question bank. With over 1,000 practice questions, it's a valuable resource to help you prepare with confidence. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, and thank you all so much for joining me today. Let's talk about some helpful tips for successfully tackling board exam questions. Tip number one, read each question slowly and carefully, identifying what the question is really asking. Tip number two, Pay close attention to key details, such as the patient's age, medical history, and presenting symptoms. Tip number three, you can also rule out distractor answer choices by eliminating options that fail to address the question directly or do not align with the patient's clinical presentation. So with this in mind, let's jump right in. A 78-year-old patient presents to the clinic reporting dizziness, hearing loss, and tinnitus in the left ear. The nurse practitioner performs a Weber test to assess for the possibility of Meniere disease. Which of the following findings would most likely be expected? A. Air conduction is greater than bone conduction. B. Bone conduction is greater than air conduction. C. The sound lateralizes to the left ear. Or D. The sound lateralizes to the right ear. Go ahead, pause this video if you need to, and take a few moments to think about the answer and come back and join us when you are ready to review. So when answering this question, it is very helpful to identify the keywords and phrases that guide you toward the correct answer. In this case, the words and phrases are dizziness, hearing loss, and tinnitus, which are all classic symptoms of Meniere disease. It is also important to note that this question mentions the Weber test, which is a helpful tool to assess for hearing loss. Quick bonus question here, is Meniere disease a type of conductive or sensorineural hearing loss? That's right, it's a type of sensorineural hearing loss. So if you were thinking D, the sound lateralizes to the right ear, you would be correct. In Meniere disease, the hearing loss is sensorineural meaning there is damage to the inner ear. During the Weber test, the sound will lateralize to the unaffected, or the good ear, in cases of sensorineural hearing loss, which is gonna be the right ear in this scenario. But let's take a look at those incorrect answer choices. Option A, air conduction is greater than bone conduction. Well, this would be the expected finding during the Rennie test in patients with normal hearing, but is not at all related to the Weber test, so we can immediately rule out this option. Now, let's take a look at option B, bone conduction is greater than air conduction. Well, this would suggest conductive hearing loss during the Rennie test, not the Weber test, so this answer can also be ruled out. Option C, the sound lateralizes to the left ear, would suggest conductive hearing loss in the left ear, but we know that Meniere disease causes sensorineural hearing loss, making this option incorrect. Let's do a quick knowledge check on the Weber test. What is a normal result on the Weber test? That's right, sound is heard equally in both ears. Number two, what is a suspected finding if someone has conductive hearing loss on the Weber test? You've got it, sound lateralizes to the affected or the bad ear. Now number three, what is the suspected finding if someone has sensorineural hearing loss on the Weber test? Well, you should all know this one as it's something we just covered with our practice question, but that's right, the sound will lateralize to the unaffected or the good ear. If you are interested in learning more about how to pass boards, be sure to explore our review courses. While practice questions are essential for success, they are just one piece of the puzzle. You also need a solid grasp on the content as well. Also, if you are looking for a supportive community of students prepping for boards just like you, join our Facebook group. Links to these resources can be found in the description. And here are our references. 
Thank you all so much for watching this video and letting us support you on your journey to becoming a real deal NP. We know that with the right mindset and confidence, you can conquer this exam. Until next time.